Hey Ant fans, my name is Jessica and welcome to Los Angeles. Um, in today's video, I wanna talk about moving your ant colonies out of your test tube. Um, you're gonna do that for a variety of reasons. It might be because the test tube has gone dry, they don't have any water anymore, or because um, it's gotten moldy and the environment is not safe um, because of the mold, um, or because they're outgrowing the test tube and you need to move them into um, a formicarium um, or a starting formicarium, a founding formicarium that works for them. So this is how I moved um, Tinkerbell out of her initial test tube that she was in because it got too moldy. This is what I did. So before you move your ants from their old home or from their test tube, you have to consider the suitability of the new home. In my case, I just moved them from one test tube into another because of a mold outbreak. But if you're moving into a new formicarium, you want to make sure that it's the right size for the size of your ants and size of your colony, and it has the right moisture level. If the new home is too large, they may be tempted to use their home chambers as their trash can, increasing the likelihood of mold growth. And you want to catch them before they're right and dirty. because no. no, I don't want no smell. Keep in mind that they like to be crowded. They like to get nice and cuddly close to each other. And as the Dixie Chicks have warned us, if they have Wide open spaces, it will give them room to make their big mistakes. You really should not be moving the colony out of the test tube until they have at least 20 workers if they are larger species, or about 50 workers if they are smaller species. So to start with, I needed a good way for my ants to get from one test tube to the other. I had a mini Outworld and new test tube from Ants Canada, but the larger glass tube they came in didn't exactly fit by itself. So I made sure the edges of the tube and opening to the mini Outworld were exactly aligned and then used tiny pieces of duct tape around the sides to keep it secured. Then to start the move, I used light and temperature to my advantage. Ants love to be a little warm. They're cold-blooded and can't control the temperature of their own bodies, and their bodies remain at whatever temperature their environment is. If they are too cold, they are slow, and not much growth can take place. For ant species from cold climates, they generally need to cool down to brumate, which is ants' version of hibernation, to rest between fall and spring. This helps to prolong their overall lifespan. But in general, ants love warmth. It makes them happy, more productive, and increases the growth rate of the brood. So to make the move more appealing, I kept them in my cooler kitchen and used a heating cable to provide warmth only to the new test tube. The heating cable I use is a Zurepti heating cable. I would not use this without a dimmer. Mine gets very hot without it and it would totally cook my ants if the heat was not tamed. So I use a Lutron lamp dimmer to scale down the temperature of the cable. I can use this sliding dial to essentially neuter the temperature. I keep it set so I can just barely tell the cable is a little warm when I feel it. To make it work, you plug the heating cable into the dimmer plug and plug the dimmer plug into the outlet on the wall. I've heard some people talk about putting the heating cable against the water reservoir, probably to keep a hot cable further away to prevent cooking of the colony. But this causes a lot of condensation to build up in the living chamber, potentially causing a flood. To show you what I mean, I took my cable off of the dimmer and put it onto the water reservoir of a vacant test tube. And this is what happened. So, I don't do that. I place the heating cable that, remember, is just barely a little bit warm to the touch right up against the living chamber so it's not touching the water. And they love it. Mine even line all their brood up right along it. Adorbs. They may love warmth, but they hate light. Remember, they like to live in small, dark crevices, holes, and tunnels where they can feel safe. So to encourage the move, I put down some type of cover over the new home, like towels or cloths. A lot of people use aluminum foil around the tube or a red filter cover that allows you to see the ants but keeps the ants from seeing the light. Either way, just keep the new home in the dark. As for their current residence, you can make them feel their living conditions are less than ideal by keeping them totally exposed with a nearby light. Remember not to put the light too close. Again, you don't want to cook them. So there you have it. This is the basic setup that I used to move my ants out of their old test tube that was all moldy into their new test tube. So this move actually took place a couple of weeks ago. And did you notice anything? Do you see it? Yep, they are the true suicide squad. They grabbed up a couple pieces of dead millworm carcass from their mini outworld and figured the best place to keep it would be right up against the cotton 
which is their only source of fresh water. I don't know, maybe it's their version of hanging a moose head on the wall. As you might guess, this caused yet another mold outbreak, and eventually, I had to move them again into a different test tube. But thanks to the setup I just showed you, the second move took only a couple of short hours. Since then, they seem to be a little older and maybe wiser when it comes to dead carcass placement, but I won't hold my breath. The setup has actually been extremely successful for me on multiple occasions, for Tink and others. Just remember to be patient. Once you have all the conditions just right, it may take the colony hours, days, or even several weeks to decide to make the move and get everyone on board with that decision, including the queen, who is usually a little slow. If you enjoyed this video and would like to see updates on Tink's colony, meet new colonies, or get more tutorial videos like this one, or see interviews with other ant keepers to learn even more, feel free to subscribe and hit the bell icon. Thanks for watching. Hope to catch you again soon.